one is called the Leaning Lotus. No inverting required for this one. You can invert up into it or drop down, and we're going to be entering it from a jasmine-like position. Um, you also don't have to be super high up for this one, okay? So you can take it aerially. You can work on it from the ground either way. But I will say, despite the fact that there is no inverting required for this one, I was a little surprised that this move was a little more challenging than I expected it to be. You know, looking at the shape, I was like, oh, that looks like a nice, simple shape. It takes a little more effort than I was anticipating. Might be different for you, okay? We're all different. What works for one person and comes easy might be more of a challenge for the other. But a few things, hopefully, that I can kind of show you um, some of the little tips and tweaks that I found made this move easier. Okay, so we're gonna get into this one from a jasmine-ish leg hang position. Like I said, you can drop down into it or you can invert up into it. I'll try to kind of switch and sometimes do it from one entrance and one from another, okay? It's gonna be an elbow hold with your bottom elbow. Um, there does, it does take a little bit of flexibility with that bottom leg only because you have to be able to bring it around the pole, okay? so. That would be the only thing as far as like, if there's something you have to do to stretch prepare for this, is it is a little bit on the hamstrings to get that leg around. If you have tighter hamstrings, that rotation around just might not be quite as smooth, doesn't mean that it won't work, okay? So I'm gonna do it this first time going from inverting up, and like I said, some of the time I'll demo dropping down, some of the time I'll demo going up into it. So we're gonna go from a invert outside leg hang or drop down like you're going to an outside leg hang and right from here, I'm placing my forearm, my bottom forearm on the pole and sneaking my inside arm through, okay? So my palm is towards my face. Once here, I'm gonna drop my bottom arm down. Now it's where I'm basically in a jasmine with this hand through here, okay? Now, here's the part that can be a little bit tricksy depending on hamstring flexibility. This bottom leg, I have to bring around and I'm gonna place it on my arm, okay? I'm going to grab said bottom leg with that hand that's sneaking through, pulling it towards the pole. I'm gonna sit my butt to the pole before I straighten that top leg. Rehook the top leg, release the bottom leg, and you're back into your jasmine, okay? So a few things with this that I found. For those of you that leg flexibility is not an issue and you tend to go really wide, I did find with this, when I take that bottom leg around, if I make my legs into too big of a genie position, A, it makes it harder to grab that bottom foot, B, my contact points are not quite as secure, okay? So those of you that maybe have a less flexy straddle or spready to the gods, this is your jam, okay? Those of you that are more flexy, you're gonna have to keep your legs together a little bit and it will make this move a little bit easier, okay? So from a jasmine, and what order you go in on this, whether you go from an outside leg hang, a jasmine, that sneak of the arm through, different for everyone. You could go outside leg hang to a jasmine, then sneak the hand in, whichever you prefer, okay? But bottom line is this inside hand is gonna sneak through basically crotch area until it gets up to your elbow, okay? You're gonna find the pressure point you're gonna feel is more on your forearm. I mean, yes, it ends up elbow, but I find once I sink into the move, the place where I end up with a rose garden is right down here below my elbow, okay? The bottom leg is gonna come around. It's gonna wrap around that bottom arm, which is straight, and then you're going to reach down with that top hand and grab ideally at your ankle. Okay, I would encourage you to try to grab ankle versus toes for a couple of reasons. A, this is much more secure and solid and it's gonna give you much better tension in the move. Um, and also when you grab the toe, it tends to oftentimes make our toes sickle. Okay, so you're gonna get a much nicer line here. Whether you grab with a C grip or a true grip thumb wrapped or a cup grip is up to you personal preference. I would say I generally will go with the cup, but sometimes I end up wrapping my thumb. So there's no pros, cons, advantage, disadvantage, Either one works, okay? Once you've got all those things in place, we've got that arm in, we've brought the bottom leg around, we've grabbed it, and now we're ready to release that top leg. Yes, there is going to be some flexibility to release that top leg also, okay? And whether it straightens all the way, different for everyone. Remember, there's all kinds of variations to every shape. But one of the things that I found that gives me that contact point when I get there and I'm like, ooh, okay, I'm ready to open that top leg, is as I'm ready to, I really think about like sitting my butt back into the pole so it increases these contact points. 
when I do straighten my top leg, back of my knee is still touching the pole. No, I'm not in a leg hang anymore, but I still do have a contact point. Okay, so when you're ready to release that top leg, really think about like sitting back into it. We don't want to be so much here, but more this kind of like push your tushy into the pole. Okay, so let's look at it if we were to drop down into it. And also actually something I didn't say at the beginning, um, this move can be done on spin or static. Honestly, I really don't feel that the spin or the static makes much of a difference with this move. My pole just happens to be on spin. And those of you that know me know that I generally tend to default to spin, especially when teaching things so that you can kind of see them from all sides. But there's no pros, con, advantage, disadvantage to doing this on static or on spin. So whichever works best for you. Okay. So let's look at it um, from dropping down from a jasmine or even just going into a jasmine from down low. Okay. So if we go into it from down low, if I just hook a leg. Okay. Here is the thing though. You can, if you're having trouble bringing that bottom leg around, you could, it's a little hard to get into this from here, but you could go from the ground here, just push off. And this leg is already right here. Okay. Now I can grab this bottom foot, push my butt into the pole, straighten my top leg, rehook that leg. Now you're in a bit of a genie and you can come out however you would like, okay? So that's a nice way to kind of get into it from lower down and not have to worry about getting that bottom leg around the pole because if we do it from the floor, that leg is already in front, right? And once again, you can do it on spin or static. I push myself into a spin just so you can kind of see all the angles with it. Okay, so let's look at the chain of events here. Jasmine, elbow sneaks through first and foremost before anything else happens, that inside elbow is gonna sneak through. Bottom arm is gonna drop down. It doesn't have to be straight initially, okay? If it makes it easier for you to get your bottom leg around with that bottom leg bent, generally speaking, it won't, but if that helps you, that's okay. And then as the bottom leg comes around, that bottom arm is straight, outside leg comes around, inside hand grabs. Last but not least, if you feel comfortable and solid in the move, then we straighten that top leg, okay? So we've looked at inverting up into it. We've looked at stepping into it on the ground. Let's look at dropping down into it from up high, okay? So taking it into a jasmine, however you like to get into a jasmine. So we're here. Inside arm, or my top arm, is gonna sneak through. That bottom leg has to come around. Grab the bottom leg, sit my tushy to the pole, and straighten my top leg. Rehook, take that leg around. So I do find the higher up I am, and not necessarily high, high, just high enough that I'm not going to kick the round, um, the more options I have for getting out of it. I don't know if you could see, but when I did it from the ground, when I just stepped into it, I could go back to a genie, a little hard to sneak that leg back around, like if I wanted to go back to a jasmine, that kind of thing. So if you take it to climb up, you'll have more exit options. But as with all moves, when you're trying to move for the first time or any time, make sure you're safe. First and foremost is, you know, do it nice and low, have a mat, have a spotter, Make sure you're doing it safely before you try taking it, you know, 5, 10, 20 feet up, something like that. Okay, so real quick, contact points you should feel when you finally get into this move. Elbow, I'd say that's the one I feel the most. My bottom butt cheek, the opposite one to this, okay? Once we've wrapped it around that leg, I sit my butt back into the pole. And then the back of this top knee, and of course that bottom hand, okay? So you technically have four points of contact on this move. All right, so this is the Leaning Lotus. Try it on spin, try it on static, put it into a combo, make it your own and have fun with it. Yeah.